Anthologies about motherhood are usually written in glowing tones as grown children pay tribute to their mother's unselfish devotion and love. Moms who don't deeply love their children are the stuff of horror stories until now. The new book, How I Learned How to Cook, is a study of mother-daughter relationships that have gone seriously wrong. And the author, Margot Perrin, joins us to talk about it. Welcome. Good to see you. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Sounds more like, a, what is it, Joe Crawford, Mommy Dearest, Mommy Dearest kind of approach it? here. Why? Well, it started with my own story about my mother. I had a very, um, what I thought was an untraditional relationship with my mother, um, where it, there were a lot of problems in the relationship. And so I started out by writing a story about it. And I thought what I was doing was writing a story about all the horrible things she did to me, mm -hmm. just to get it out. But what happened was something very interesting as I was writing it. I realized that I had a much deeper question about whether we have the ability to love, even if our mothers don't love us. Mm. And that led me to much, a much wider view of what had happened with my mother. Mm -hmm. So after I wrote my story, I started looking around to see if other people had written stories about the shadow side of their relationships. And I found that actually there, had been nev there never had been a collection of stories about that. The collections that existed were really about the more idealized, reverent stories sure. about mothers. And the ones you would buy for Mother's Day gifts. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that always made me feel very lonely and isolated because my relationship was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So I started looking around also at uh, book length memoirs to see if any writers had written about that. And I did find a few where the theme was touched on. And um, I then set out to create a collection. Give our viewers some examples of the collection. What are some things that stand out as you were putting this together? Um, well, one story uh, which I love, I mean, I love all the stories in the book, but um, Ruth Kluger wrote a memoir uh, called Still Alive, and it's a lot about her relationship with her mother, even through the Holocaust. And I never have found another writer who, is, who can be that honest about the difficulties in a relationship as they went through such an incredible experience. And she is unflinching in her description of that. Mm -hmm. um, Vivian Gornick, um, her relationship with her mother was um, very intense as well. Um, they tried to, she has this quote in the book um, where she talks about um, her mother wore her, her mother's depression gave her a reason for, a, a purpose for living. And um, <coughs> her depression became her raison d'etre and through that her daughter um, became very depressed herself and she tried to work this out with her mother and when they tried to work it out her mother um, put her fist through the door. Well it, it begs the question why would you call something how I learned to cook uh, which sounds so homey when in fact this is not. Yeah, <laughs> um, that, The title comes from one of the essays in the book. Mm. Um, Hilary Gamera wrote an essay about how her mother told the children one night that she was putting rat poison in the dinner. And all night long, Hillary was terrified she was going to die. And when she got up in the morning, her mother said, oh, I didn't do it this time, but I might do it next time. Oh, and that's how she learned how to cook. Wow. <laughs> well, there's, there's actually a lot of humor in that story. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's another instance that you, that you point out, which, which again is just, just so, ch so chilling, is uh, one, one daughter was, actually saw her mother burn her prized <coughs> collection of books. Yes, Jamaica Kincaid. And, yes. and the, the penalty, th this was because she did what? She didn't change her brother's diaper, yes. And Jamaica Kincaid said that that's why she became a writer, to replace all the books that her mother burned. Uh. So is this also a story about women uh, coming to terms with themselves despite what, what was this tumultuous yes. relationship with mothers? Yes, because we learn how to be women through our mothers. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, what I wanted the writers to do was not just describe the difficulties in the relationship, but try to understand why their mothers were the way they were. Mm -hmm. Because women have a lot of pressure, mothers have a lot of pressures on themselves. And children's needs are monumental. And nobody, no one's perfect, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I wanted them to understand that and through understanding their mothers, understand themselves more and find some healing and transformation. Did you find that a lot of the authors were able to make peace with their mothers? I think what they did is they came to understanding. And through that, um, I can't say that every woman has been able to forgive her mother, but at least to understand her. Yeah. And I think it says a lot about the complexity of human experience. Well, I imagine for a lot of young women growing up who expect to be loved by their mothers, it's, it's a great deal of transitional learning to say, I'm still lovable in spite of the fact that I was exactly. not loved by my mother. Exactly. You start depersonalizing it. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, it's a fascinating uh, topic. 
and the picture also throws you off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very idealized photo there of, of, of the daughter looking at mom uh, icing the birthday cake. There. And you can see Margot Perrin at Hickleby's at 1378 Lincoln Avenue in San Jose on April 23rd, reading at 7 p.m. And here's the phone number to call, 292-8880. That's, of course, in San Jose at uh, 408 area code. Margo, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a nice Easter. Still ahead on Cron 4 News Weekend, teaching is a tough job that's only getting tougher, but according to a new book, unlocking the potential of the classroom starts by unlocking the teacher's mind. The author of Stupidity and Tears joins us next. Well, you can't say the weather's looking nice, but it Not promises yet. to get better this Easter Sunday. We'll have the forecast.